what we're doing today is uh, some diagnostics on a 4.3 MPI. This is uh, mid 2000s, and we can see we've got the computer software fired up and the cable hooked up to the 4 pin diagnostic connector right there with the appropriate adapter. Uh, at the moment, the in gear switch and the shift interrupt switch are still connected. So I'm going to fire this engine up um, and then we're going to look at a few things. So because we're because we're running on the flushes I don't want to leave it idling too long, so we'll now connect up the ECU. First choose a system type, which I already did, which is that one. Okay, talkie talkies, and we are connected. So there we've got a lot of information, which is uh, engine speed, etc. So you can get a good read of it there. And we can see our uh, idle air control valves doing its thing. Our uh, forget these ones down here, trim position, trim volts, etc. All of those, because there's no sensor connected for those. What we are interested in, of course, is things like engine speed, coolant temperature. Don't worry about the uh, exhaust temperatures. Again, no sensor. Um, everything else is there, and we've got all the right things happening. So we're going to go and do a, um, a codes check. So we're going to read the codes. So retrieve fault history. And we're going to read the fault history and the revs, uh, fault codes and the revs history. Now we can do this with either the engine running or the engine not running as uh, totally up to you so we can see here now things like trim circuit high um, is no sensor connected uh, interestingly I've got an IAC output uh, problem I don't know when that happened let's see where the engine hours were when that happened uh, engine speed, where's engine hours? Run time, there we go. So at the 429 hour mark, this engine's got a lot more hours on it than that. So there, that's a little while ago. Uh, engine was running. Steering, we don't have a sensor for. Fuel level, we don't have a sensor for. Pito, we don't have a sensor for. Now, here's the interesting thing. This is one I wanted to see. There's a neutral overspeed here, which indicates that while the engine was running, and it was in neutral, we've got an overspeed alarm. So there's the engine speed, 3,294 revs. So at 3,294 RPM, it gave an overspeed, a neutral overspeed alarm. What is a shift ant switch? Don't know. Here's another overspeed alarm, but if we have a look, we're in gear. And there's the engine speed, 4,941 RPM. Um, this, this engine's propped very light. Um, so I do overspeed if I want to go as fast as I can. So that one, I know about it. I'm ignoring it. So we've had a Guardian, also at 475 hours for um, neutral, 800 revs. And the error, so it's running, it's in neutral, it's idling, um, power relay is on, manifold, hmm, don't know what that Guardian's for, fuel pump check relay, we often get a lot of these things, they're just quite spurious, so here's, where, here's our, um, our hours down here, so we can see that my total run time is 490 hours. And there's the breakup of the different engine speeds. 
um, of how long we've been running at those engine speeds. So what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to disconnect the in-gear switch and see if the engine starts. So we'll shut it down. And we'll go over here. And this one I think is, yep, that's the in-gear switch. We're just going to pop that off. There we go. I'll measure the... Um, the resistance on that in a minute, both in gear and out of gear. So that's with that uh, disconnected. And we hit the key. Starts and runs. No problem at all. So we'll leave that one off and we'll now disconnect the... Oh, I keep forgetting to point the camera for you guys. So there we go. That's the shift interrupt switch. Now this is the switch that when you come out of gear it will momentarily do that because of the loading on the on the outer of the cable. It will just momentarily do that which tells the ECU over here to just momentarily cut the engine to unload the undercut dogs in the drive so that they can be shifted out of gear. So that's now disconnected. The, um, the in-gear switch is disconnected and we're going to see if it starts. Hmm, it should have started. Right, I know what's happening here. That's only running on three cylinders. So what the story there is, is the... Um, when the ECU sees this has been tripped, it shuts down three cylinders. Um, and this is a normally closed switch. Uh, so when the when that trips, it closes the switch. Sorry, it opens the switch, opens the switch, and says to the ECU, "Oi, we've got a uh, a gear change going on here. A coming out of gear does not do it. Going into gear, you don't want to cut your engine when you're going into gear. Trust me. Um, so we connected that back up, and lo and behold." It should have started. Let me put the camera down. And it started. So we'll shut it down and we'll start it again just to... There we go. So what I'll do now is I'll shut it down and we'll do some uh, meter readings on the in-gear switch. So I'll just uh, clamp off the water here. Oh, or not. And then I'll get a multimeter. And uh, just let me hook up for this. Unfortunately, I've only got one pair of hands. So what we'll do... I'm just going to pause the video and then we'll make another one. Okay, so we're back. I've uh, unfortunately the leads are black, but you can see I've uh, I've hooked up there a couple of leads to the switch uh, onto a multimeter, and we can see there that the resistance is zero ohm, so that's a closed circuit. So the switch is in a closed position. So what I'll do is I'll just go to the let's prop that so we can see it nicely. Come on, stay there. Get there eventually. All there. Close enough. Okay, so that's in the closed position. You can see the zero reading, and then I'll uh, I'll shift it into gear. You can see there the. Uh, can you see there the? And we have it now into overload, which on the fluke multimeter. Overload means open circuit. Too many ohms to be able to read. So that is an open circuit. So that switch is just literally open or closed. And it's the same for neutral. We go to zero and then to into reverse it goes open circuit again. So there we go. So 
so that that switch okay I think that uh, pretty much covers what we want to do today